Albion Online is a free-to-play, isometric sandbox MMO that takes place in a medieval setting where players can fill out a massive talent tree to unlock the ability to wield various types of weapons and armor. Albion Online features zones ranging from PvE to PvP and even a few select zones that are full loot PvP. But you don't have to go into the full loot PvP zones if that's not your thing. The game's economy is fully player driven as all equipment in the game is created by the players themselves. This will be my first time playing Albion Online, so in this video you'll see exactly what the new player experience is like, the good and the bad. I'll show you what the PvP and the PvE are like for a brand new player. I've been put all of my gear on the line by jumping into Albion's famous full loot PVP to see what that's like. Albion Online is an MMO that just keeps growing in popularity. It's clearly doing something right, so let's find out what that is. Massive thank you to Sandbox Interactive for sponsoring this video so that I can make the time to dive in. Let's begin my journey from brand new player to full loot PVP here. All right, here we go. Albion Online, a game I've heard a lot about, but I've never played it myself. It's a game that I've had my eye on for a long time because interest in it is growing and growing where interest in other MMOs has been falling and falling. So it's defying a trend that most MMOs seem to have a difficult time defying, to say the least. I'm excited to try it today. I'm jumping in. It all starts with character creation. So here we are. We're going to make our character. It looks like we've got some options. We've got the male. We'll go ahead and choose this nice lady here as a starting point. All right, so we've got our character made. Choose the name. This is going to be, I think I'm going to go with an archer, but this isn't going to be any archer. This is going to be an archer made by somebody that's never played the game before. So this is going to be... All right, here we go. The Lighthouse. The game starts out as MMOs often do. Waking up on a beach. This is going to be the tutorial, I take it. There's something so nice about that, starting with nothing at the beginning of an MMO and having everything to look forward to. All right, let's take a look at the map. So we're starting out here on what must be the tutorial island. Classic. Uh, and then we've got different biomes, forests, maybe a swamp or something. Definitely like a desert, snow area. Oh, maybe this is a swamp, yeah. Gathering, gather things by clicking on them. Easy enough, so this game's got gathering and therefore crafting. Okay, so this is how you get skills on your bar. Choose between a single attack ability or a AOE ability. We're gonna go with AOE. Because when is AOE not great for leveling? Attack speed is pretty satisfying, actually. It was a lot faster than I was expecting it to be for those light attacks. You know, I'm just so used to MMOs having really long, you know, cooldown on the light attacks. Mastery achieved trainee farmer. Nice. So this is your... Wow. There are a lot of things to unlock in this game. That's quite a bit of progression. I wonder if you can unlock all of it. Like if you play the character long enough, would you be able to unlock all of this? Okay. All right. Well, a quick Google search says you could theoretically do it. It would just take a really long time to level everything up, but it's possible. Very cool. So that means that this game has a ton of progression. If you want it, you could stick to it and uh, spend quite a bit of time leveling up your character, if that's correct, which is pretty cool. I like that. All right. Where are my friends? <laughs> Imagine having friends, am I right? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never under- Acquire a beginner's pickaxe and acquire a beginner's axe, which requires me to gather more logs and rocks. I've been training my whole life for this moment. All those hours in New World are starting to pay off now. Come back here and can we craft what we came for? A craft. The art style for this game is really growing on me. I'm like, you know, it's vibrant. It's nice. Birch trees and foxes. Okay. Time to die, fox. Do a barrel roll. <sighs> he didn't barrel roll. I will say the combat feels great. Very responsive. The really quick light attacks feel great. It's a nice change of pace from MMOs typically, where your character, you know, they'll auto attack. Gosh, what, once a second in a quicker game and longer than that in slower games? One of the first things I want to do is get a new set of, like, uh, tools. Where are my tools at? Oh, they just sit in the inventory. There's no slots for them, it looks like. I would love to see there be slots for all these tools. What other pieces do we have here? We're missing potion, food, a cape, a helmet, and a bag. We've got carry weight. In this range, carried items will not slow you down. 
100 to 130, you get slowed by 20%, then by 50%, 70%, and then finally 85% and above 800, you can't move. Although I think there's going to be two ways to go about all this, like most of these games, where you can either craft your own gear or you can buy your gear. Some logs. Okay. Crafting seems to be pretty intuitive so far. Kill heretics until you reach the learning point threshold. Dude, say no more. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when a quest says, uh, just kill things. That's what I'm here for. But we have some materials, so I'm going to craft something, I think. Because why not, right? A novice bow. Oh, we don't have enough wood. So do I need to refine the wood first before I can use it? Is it like that? Nice. Legolas is in action. Okay, what are our options here? Crowd control. Release a volley of arrows and a cone in front of you, knocking back all enemies hit. Or damage debuff. Shoot an arrow. I'm going to go with AoE. Wishcom Legolas here is starting to take shape. Create a distraction by killing the heretics. Okay. Oh, man, I'm getting that uh, that biting addiction feeling kind of creeping in where, you, you know, number go up. Want to level all the things. All these things are grayed out. Can't push the buttons yet. Must want me off this island. It's like, please leave. All the buttons are grayed out. Stop hanging out here. <laughs> Okay, fine, dude. I don't know if I'm ready to go out into the big scary world of Albion Online just yet, though. You know, this beginner's island is very nice. Quick Google search says that I can change this later, so where I choose isn't hugely important. I like the idea of Highland Cross because I like the Highlands. I like that kind of like biome. Usually looks pretty attractive. Let's go check it out. Plus Highlands, I don't know, something, you know, look at Legolas just fits right in here. I got three premium days. What does that mean? What is premium? And now being online, characters can be upgraded to premium status. Upgraded characters benefit in a wide variety of ways, including faster game progression, higher yield rewards, and the ability to use some features that are not available to non-premium players. How do you get premium? Upgrade your character to premium by spending silver or gold on premium status screen. Okay, so you can either buy premium with in-game currency or gold, which is the cash shop currency, as I understand it. And you can buy cash shop currency with in-game currency. So you could play this game completely for free, including the subscription. That's pretty cool. I've got some food here. What does that do? Simple meal that increases health regeneration outside of combat for a long time. What's a long time? <laughs> Why not just tell me how, how many minutes? There must be some modifier or something, but still, it would be nice to know. Well, it's for a long time. You know, a long time to me might not be a long time to you. I'll be in store. What can we buy in the store? I guess at some point we're going to have to look in here, right? Okay, so you can get gold with cash money and... Premium, same thing. Somehow, I think there's a way. It said you could get gold with silver, but I don't see it. This is 19 bucks, and with this, you get gold with it. Oh, I see. So these kind of, it's like bundles. You can get gold, which you can then convert into silver. Ooh, look at that, dude. Legolas would look nice. But you know what? We're going to kind of do this playthrough as a free-to-play player. From this point on, there's only a few optional quests to guide you through the world of Albion. Number go up. Brain juices are happy. Finish a royal expedition. Nice, an expedition. What's that? Let's see what we got here. What if we group up a bunch of mobs? Can we AOE farm in this game? Oh, a leash. Okay. So not kind of not really. Oh boy. Oh man. Legolas! Oh, oh, never doubted you for a second, Legolas. Not one second, buddy. We've trained too hard to get this far and die already. Nice. Does that mean this is a boss fight coming up? Heck yeah. The heck? Oh. oh okay. Oh, oh, barely got that one off. Nice, dude. Okay, I like this. I like it. The combat's feeling really good, actually. I'm impressed with it. It's just feeling really smooth, really responsive. It's what you want to happen is what's happening. And sometimes it's, you know, these kind of games that get that all wrong. It just doesn't feel responsive enough. You get locked in animations too much or something like that. Oh, we made some pretty decent gold there, or silver rather. And so since this is full loop PvP, I need to drop this stuff before I die with it all, huh? 100%. There are daily rewards for finishing your first expedition each day. Expedition rewards are moderate compared to open world rewards. Group and hardcore expeditions. You can register for group expeditions as a solo player. You will be automatically matched with others to form a group. Hardcore expeditions are full groups of five and can be level one to 18. The higher the level, the harder the content. 
Okay, but when do people have the ability to loot my corpse, man? That's what I'm scared of. I'm not ready to lose it all yet. Used to reveal a hidden entrance. The map is consumed in the process. The search might fail if you're too far from the zone of the same tier as the map. Okay. Open your inventory. Use the dungeon map. Oh, it wants me to do that. Oh, it's sending us out into the world. Let's go. A solo dungeon. Oh, that's right. That's why I was out here was to find a solo dungeon. Let's go. Let's see what we get. Oh, boy. I'm out of mana. Big damage. Oh. No. No. No, dude. <laughs> oh, man. Are you kidding me? One hit. I'm suicide in chat to die. Damn, dude, that's harsh. I didn't lose by that much. I'm enjoying the expeditions. These like solo expeditions. It's like little mini dungeons that you can do by yourself. It's pretty nice, man. It's pretty chill activity. I'm getting a lot of experience for all the types of gear that I'm wearing right now. My bow, my leather armor, my cloth armor, my heavy armor. Like they're all getting something because I'm wearing them while I'm getting these kills, which is great. So they are all progressing constantly in here. And I'm excited to use this money I'm making to go get that next tier of bow. Then raged. Ooh, uh, good fight, good fight. What do we get for all that work? Ooh, some adept soldier boots. Oh, some T4 gear? How does one get out of here? We run all the way out? Oh, wait. It's a glowing button here. Exit dungeon. Oh, dude, I was, I was beginning to accept that I had to run all the way back right when I saw that blinking button. So this is a zone where technically I could be attacked. Need a journeyman's pickaxe or better. I'm officially behind <laughs> on gathering. It never takes me long to fall behind on gathering in MMOs. I just so quickly I get to the zone where I can't gather anything because I've already fallen behind. I see a lot of people running around in the uh, like overline content. It's really nice. You never feel like the game's dead. Like anywhere, the towns are absolutely packed with people. Everyone's crammed in the same area, maybe even to a fault because you can't even see the vendor, or the merchant or whatever you're trying to interact with. It's one of the things I would love to see improve. Maybe the pacing of progression in this game feels fantastic. Just always feel like I'm making progress. This guy has a little bit of a glow to him. I wonder if that means he's stronger. Yeah, 5,400. So that green glow means that they give you better loot, like way better XP, it seems. So that must be like, I heard something about like the longer something's alive, the harder it is to fight and the better the rewards for killing it. I wonder if that wasn't an archer that happened to live a little bit longer. Nobody had killed it in a while. 1,000 silver for that kill. Oh my gosh, I should have come here. Okay, the moral of the story is do not get caught up doing things in the low level zones things just start advancing so much faster later on this is a really cool looking portal entering a black zone okay i wonder what this is let's go check it out i've never been in a black zone before looks pretty cool now the question is how much xp do we get in the black zone four thousand for that it's okay it's okay it's not like actually that impressive there's dead animals here. Somebody killed something over here, I think. 525. So the XP in this zone isn't like anything to write home to mom about. Wonder if you get anything special in the black zone though. Small groups. Okay, another black region. All my skills are on cooldown when I entered here. Oh my God. I almost died to the mob. I don't think I'm ready for this area. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> man. Oh, man.
Ooh, no. No, dude. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it was a close battle. It was much closer than I thought it was going to be. Dying is losing your equipment. Okay, the important thing is to get back up on your feet. Okay. Oh, man, we almost had him. Honestly, I didn't think that we'd even come that close in there, which is really... That nah, feels good that we came that close, honestly. I thought it was going to be absolutely demolished by that guy in there, but we put up a decent fight. Oh, no, we're absolutely naked. We've lost everything in there, but that's okay. Uh, the whole reason that I went in there was to show you just how easy it is to recover from participating in full loot PVP in this game. It's, I think it's something that scares people a lot more than it should once you understand how it works and how easy it is to recover. So you saw there, I took in a build loadout and I almost got that guy. You know, if I had played a little less potato, you know, I might've even won. So if we go here, we go to loadouts. We picked the loadout that we were on. I took my full loot loadout in there and it says this is gonna cost me about 10,000 to replace, buy and equip. There it is. And now, we have all our gear bank again right away and I've got 29,000 gold left. For reference, the 13,000 gold that I just lost is uh, maybe a dungeon or two, maybe one, one and a half corrupt dungeons that I was doing. And you know, that's just as a low level player. I'm sure that making that amount of money is even more trivial after you are more than a few days into the game. So it's not really something that you need to be afraid of. And uh, it's pretty exciting. It's a lot of fun. And as you saw there, it was a close battle and I was taking tier four gear in, you know, just some, eh, okay tier four gearing wasn't great 13,000 to replace it all you know very very low investment build you can go in there and you know who knows if i would have killed that guy what he would have been wearing you know what he might have had on him and what i would have came home with and if you're not into full loot pvp you can stay in the yellow zones stay in the dungeons and where you get the pvp action along with the pve and you don't lose everything in the process all right, we've invaded someone's game here. Now we're going to go try to kill them, get a little PvP in. They took down one of the shards. And if they take down three, it boots me out. So I'll try not to let that happen. What happens if I go in there? He's like looking. It's like almost like if, if I do that, it tells the guy where I'm at. Oh, he was seen over there. I think that's what that eyeball means. I'm just going to go kind of aggressive here and see if I can find him. Oh, there he is, dude. There he is. Oh, I got him down to half. Let's see if we can't get a W on one of these. Oh, I was invaded. I'm beginning to feel like I chose the wrong gear. We're back. Yesterday, the PVP didn't go so well for us. So hoping we can get a W in here today. Let's go. Okay, we got a new pair of boots. These boots are going to be able to heal us in combat. Hopefully that helps us. We're not killing people. We're dying. And in PvP, the little teleport I was doing just wasn't helping. You know, the cooldown was too long. So, swapped out the teleport for a heal. Ready to find another corrupt. All right, let's activate this thing. Let's get someone in here, hopefully. Where's my invader? Is there no one else? I wonder if there's like a way to further increase getting people in here. Oh, someone's here. Oh, it puts you back up to full health when the invader comes in. Oh, that's nice. So I think that tells them I'm here. So they can come find me and we can battle this out. Where is this person? I don't want to be fighting the boss. I'm going to fight you inside there, but. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Yes, dude. Oh, man. Oh, the heartbeat's going there, dude. The heartbeat's going there. The boots made the difference. The boots made the difference. Oh, okay. All right, man, dude. 
Oh, the boots coming in clutch there with a little extra heal, the speed boost to kite. Oh, that worked so much better. Now we can get the boss, get the loot. Let's go. Uh, let's go, man. Let's go. What a corrupted dungeon. After diving into Albion Online, I've got to say I was pleasantly surprised by the game's UI, its combat, and its open world. I was happy to find out how approachable the full loot PvP was. I think this scares a lot of people away, but in reality it's not as scary as it sounds. You only take into full loot PvP what you're willing to lose. Players go in there with gear that's only worth a small fraction of their net worth. If they die, they click one button at the auction house and their character automatically repurchases the loadout that they lost so that they're ready to dive in again. I'm not sure how scaling works, but I went in as an inexperienced player with a build I completely made up on the fly and I held my own using this incredibly cheap gear. My biggest complaint? How zoomed in the destiny board is. I don't understand why we can't zoom out farther and move it around before zooming it back in again. If there's any part of the UI that could use some love, my vote is on the destiny board. The pace of leveling felt great as a new player. There was always a type of gear that I was leveling up and getting better at using. Whether it was my bow or my plate boots or my leather armor, I always had a fantastic sense of progression while I was playing and that's incredibly important for a sandbox game. When an MMO isn't giving you a quest chain to follow to keep you putting one foot in front of the other, it can be easy to feel aimless and unsure of what to do next. But in Albion Online, the answer was always on the right side of my screen. There was always some weapon or piece of gear to level up and become more proficient in. That next tier of gear to unlock. I was feeling great at tier 5, but what would tier 6 feel like? And what about after I unlocked 10 more levels of my bow mastery? How would that feel? The answer was that it felt amazing. You could feel your character getting stronger and you could increase your rewards by grinding out those levels in higher risk areas like pvp zones or if you're especially brave the full loot pvp zones my favorite content was probably the corrupted dungeons which offered the ability to get a nice mix of pve and pvp content at the same time i think the most common misconception about albion online is that it's always full loot pvp when in reality it's up to you to decide how much risk you're involved in there's plenty of content that is not full loot there's plenty of content that isn't even pvp centric at all the game is free to play so the cash shop features your usual free-to-play affairs, cosmetics, pay to advance faster, and all that stuff. All in all, I had a great time with this game, and I would recommend giving it a try if you're looking for something new to play. It's free, so you literally have nothing to lose. If you enjoy MMO content, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. Massive shout out to my YouTube members for supporting the channel with five bucks a month. To become a member, click the join button below for perks like behind the scenes footage, exclusive Discord channels, and more. If you're not sure what to do next, check out one of the videos popping up on screen right now.